what's going on guys it's omniarch and today i'm bringing you a brand new video where we're going to be covering the golden kingdom event in rise of kingdoms now really quick at the beginning of my last video i had a statement on screen basically telling you guys that i am not professionally affiliated with lilith and the point of that message was to let you guys know that anytime that I say good things about Lilith, I don't have a actual tangible external reason to do so. Uh, however, the way that I worded it, and this was pointed out to me, the way that I worded it made it sound like sponsored creators are persuaded or, you know, uh, incentivized to say good things about the game. And that's not the case. Sponsored creators are literally just players like you and I who happen to make videos about Rise of Kingdoms and Lilith just appreciates those videos. I wanted to clear this up because I don't want to perpetuate the idea that sponsored creators are you know they have this really positive uh and and biased opinion towards lilith many of them have made videos that criticize some decisions that lilith has made or they're critic they criticize different events and or things in the game and so i wanted to just clear that up right away right at the beginning because i think that's important now the golden kingdom event if you guys have been watching me on twitch you know that i've been excited about this event ever since the update first came out that introduced this and it's it hasn't been in my kingdom until now and i think that this is the case for a lot of you guys and you know when i first saw this uh benny was live streaming this uh, event and i'll link his twitch in the description below he is a great rise of kingdoms live streamer he's got a really cool culture over on his uh on his stream he's very chill he's funny uh and so i, I do appreciate that he was streaming this event when it first went live so go check out benny down in the description below but the golden kingdom event is a single player event that is an entirely new game mode in rise of kingdoms unlike anything we've seen before besides the kind of battle aspect uh, this is essentially a 20 floor dungeon and you progress through each floor of the dungeon by defeating that floor's chief every four floors there is a checkpoint floor and these floors will give you a nice little bit of rewards as well as a pit stop to make purchases to enhance your army moving forward and we'll talk about that in a minute but the important part is that when you eventually lose you can actually reset back to your latest checkpoint as you can see i made it to i think about floor 18 or 19 before i actually did lose i reset back to floor 16 a couple times but then i realized that i think i messed up way too early on for that that reset to, to make sense and so i've completely restarted the golden kingdom i think you can do full resets two or three times but uh it may be unlimited i'm not sure i've only done one once each floor is a tiled board and it is covered in fog and you can uncover this fog as long as you have uncovered adjacent tiles as well so you basically proceed from the starting point across the map until you find the chieftain you defeat the chieftain and then you can proceed to the next floor if you want to or you can proceed to explore that floor in hopes that you find different blessings or different I believe they're called relics they're essentially single-use items that are only relevant to the Golden Kingdom now hidden in this fog are going to be different obstacles the most common of which is going to be an enemy army that you have to attack and defeat and the way that battles play out in this game mode is essentially the same as Sunset Canyon you start with five different armies out on the battlefield and you fight the enemies five different armies now it's a little bit different from Sunset Canyon because the enemy configuration is going to be somewhat random and so sometimes you will have certain rows that are just uh, or sorry certain columns that are just not filled in with troops and so it's a little bit different but also uh, your troops will sustain damage from these battles and that damage is kept even after the battle is over and so the success that you have in this game mode it depends on how long you can sustain these armies now you do have a couple of chances of reviving dead armies and recruiting new armies but I will say new Near the end of this event around floor 17 18 19 those floors are very very difficult and so if you're not preparing for those floors at the very beginning of the event you may have a really tough time progressing past those higher levels and so it's important to keep a couple of things in mind when you first start the event now the first thing to keep in mind is that tanky armies are going to be a little bit more important here than they would normally be in sunset canyon because the success or failure of your golden kingdom run depends on whether or not you can even make it to the very end and so if all you have are dps marches or all you have are aoe marches uh they may be able to deal nice damage but if you run out of troops then that's it you're done so tanky armies are very important here the second thing you want to keep in mind is that this event uh scales with your own uh progress in the game so i believe you have to be at least level uh, city hall 17 in order to play this event so that's something that you guys should keep in mind if you're not there yet um, but a level uh, 17 city hall player is going to have a much uh, a much easier 
golden kingdom than i will have however it will be relative to their strength so of course my account is much farther along than a level 17 and so it should be relatively the same difficulty but i'm gonna see a lot of t5s whereas a city hall level 17 it probably won't so in theory if all strength is relative then everybody should be able to get to floor 20 so long as you have a decent run and you optimize from the very beginning and with that being said let's just jump right into the game mode because i think some things are easier to explain when i'm actually showing them so this is what the game board kind of looks like you can see in the background here but first we have to set our troops now this is important because these are going to be your armies that you use for the entirety of the event so this is crucial to get this part right I'm going to set my uh, Richard and my Alexander as the primary tanky March now it's worth noting that only some buffs actually apply in here one of them that does apply is actually your city theme and so before I go in I actually had temple of Vishnu I actually prefer using the gingerbread house I think that uh, cavalry defense is better than archer attack and so they both give a buff to infantry health which i think is the tankiest stat that we can uh, give a benefit to so that's what i'm going to choose for my city skin it also seems to be the case that runes uh army expansions and different uh, attack or defense buffing items or boosts in your uh, inventory here like this one these i don't believe work at all in the event there's no mention of them working so i just am going to assume that they don't but let's go ahead and actually set our troops now so what we're going to do here and i do actually have an army expansion on and you can see that i can't go past 210 so 100 percent confirmed army expansions do not work which means the other buffs and boosts the other boost items probably don't work as well so my first army that i'm going to build here is going to be a richard primary with alexander secondary full a t5 infantry obviously like i said this is going to be my tank army the second tank army i'm gonna i'm gonna build is charles martel with joan of arc now joan of arc isn't necessarily that tank but her buff is going to be uh, applying to all of my armies which is very good so i'm going to put the remainder of my t5 infantry next i'm going to do my minamoto and tsao tsao army this is a strictly single target dps it's just going to be the best used for my uh, t5 cavalry so we're going to put that in there as well it's not going to be in the front row my next army is going to be an aoe army so this is going to be my ethelfled and my isong this is pretty self-explanatory but uh the ethelfled has a half circle aoe which is good and it applies an insanely good debuff you definitely want Want her in here next obviously we're doing a isong for his circular aoe and so we're doing like 95 percent archers then we're going to do a little bit of our leftover t5 cav and then we're going to do a little bit of swordsman the reason for this is because of obviously ethel fled wants three troop types and so we want majority archers for isong but we still want three so that's going to be my next army that's also not very tanky so i'm not going to put it in the front row now the last time that i did this event i did a sun tzu with a Mehmed, and the reason for this was obviously for the aoe plus the skill damage buff plus I bring in a little bit of extra troops now I did only make it to floor I believe 18 uh, and so what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to change this up a bit and I decided that I want to change my Martel so my Martel is actually going to be with a Julius Caesar um, I'm going to try this as a bit more tankiness than Joan of Arc so that's what we're going to do here we're going to put even more swordsmen with him and I think that's a pretty tanky army right there uh, my Julius Caesar is 5511 I believe um, and so that's going to be a good option now finally I'm going to do Sun Tzu with Joan of arc this is not really an optimal pairing however i will note that um because of sun Tzu's skill tree we're going to be popping off joan of arc's active skill a lot and so i'm hoping that that's going to be beneficial to us again i'm still optimizing my armies for this game mode so this is not going to be perfect it may turn out that i should have done the other way with the uh Mehmed on my sun Tzu. that could be the case it could be a better option than the joan of arc but let's just go let's just to see we have we have plenty of time to uh to play this event more than once now finally it's worth noting that the equipment on your commanders matters a ton in this game mode so make sure that they have the correct equipment for what you're going to be using this is kind of the best that i could do unfortunately for my ethel flood but keep in mind again equipment and also talents are very important in this game mode so if your ethel flood is built as a peacekeeper she's not going to do well in this game mode and so keep that in mind now i can start to clear the fog on the battlefields by just tapping on the ones that are flashing those are the ones that you can touch that you can unclear so over here i can't clear any of this fog and the reason for that is because this is essentially where you're starting and so these two pieces are unclear are unfogged and so you can only branch off of those unclear pieces 
so what's important here is that you remove fog in an order with which um, will minimize the chances that you block off the most amount of squares so what do i mean by this well if you unclear a piece of fog and you discover an enemy army then every single adjacent fogged tile cannot be uncleared until that army is defeated even if what's underneath that fog that is unclearable is just an empty space however you won't know if that space is empty or if it has the chieftain which is ultimately the goal here to find him and defeat him and so really you want to unclear as much fog as possible with as little fighting as possible so that way you don't take unnecessary damage and the way that you clear the fog is important so let me describe this really quickly to you guys if i were to clear off this piece of fog right here uh, and it was an enemy let's say and I, I think that might be unlikely because this is floor one and so it's a relatively easy floor but if i unclear this piece of fog well that means that this piece can't be uncleared this piece cannot be uncleared this one this one this one and this one cannot be uncleared and so by revealing that enemy that kind of hinders my progress almost immediately and i'll almost have to fight him almost guaranteed right however if i clear off this piece of fog and i discover an enemy then i won't be able to unclear this piece of fog or this piece of fog which is only two and so you want to clear off the least threatening pieces of fog first and proceed from there and so that's what i'm going to do let's go ahead and start with this one and we immediately find a ch an abandoned chest now these chests are going to offer you a couple of rewards that are specific to the uh the lost or, i'm sorry golden kingdom event what you have here is the karaku gold this is the um basically the currency for this game mode it's exclusive to this and you're going to use this gold to buy things from the shop and that's going to help you later down the line and you also have a chance to get a relic and this is kind of like the best thing that you can get from an abandoned chest because it's just a free relic which normally costs more gold than you would normally get from these chests typically the amount is very little here we get 70 that's actually not bad for a chest sometimes you only get like 20. um so with that being said let's go ahead and proceed further so i just got my first relic and this says select a guardian your troops take 30 percent less damage from them can stack up to 80 percent damage reduction meaning i can use more than one of these at a time on a single guardian and the guardians are actually the guys you see over here this is a guardian minion these are the easiest to defeat this relic is actually very powerful this is one of the better ones from the entire game um these are going to be ones that you save for the most powerful enemies on later stages and even the chieftains of maybe this floor and there he is we have determined the chieftain he was right next to the beginning i haven't fought anybody yet so far and i was able to uncover him so that's good news he has a 3 million troop power near the end of this event they're gonna have for me at least probably about 10 million troop power if not maybe a little bit more I would say you should probably always use one of these items on the chieftains however this is literally the the easiest chieftain that I will have to defeat in this entire run and so I don't want to waste this item on him because again he's I'm gonna it's gonna be more that it's gonna be of more use later down the line against chieftains that are much more powerful so let's go in go ahead and get into a fight with him it will tell you exactly what troops they have on the opposing side and you do get a uh, chance to get a new blessing from defeating the chief so let's go ahead and attack him now this is the first fight with a chief right and as you can see here this layout that I see on the enemy side is not something you would ever see in Sunset Canyon and that is kind of one of the differences between this game mode and Sunset now the way that I lay out my army here is not going to be too relevant for this fight because this is going to be the easiest of all of them however what I will note is that I do want my Richard down here because this is where the majority of the armies are in these four tiles and so this E song is going to attack Richard this E song is going to attack Richard and this El Cid is going to attack Richard so he's going to be uh, attacking three armies and he is my most powerful tank so that's what I want to do I'm going to move Ethel fled down to this area here because she has Esong and he's just, I want him to be in the most AOE possible. So let's go ahead and start up this battle. And as you can see, my suspicion was right. Richard gets surrounded right off the bat by three different armies. And that's kind of what I wanted here because he is tanking very, very well. You can see that this Esong is getting absolutely melted because he is also getting hit by my Minamoto who is countering archers. And next we're going to move on to the next Esong, which is good. Um, my Minamoto again is going to do work here. You can see my Richard hasn't done much at all in terms of losing health. And my three armies up top actually uh, were able to take care of everything over there because they were over overwhelmed so my Richard did his job the best you can see he did lose the most amount of troops unfortunately um, but he still is like my most powerful army now I do get a option of picking a blessing and when you pick blessings what you want to do is you want to keep in mind what blessing did you pick prior and obviously this is the first one I'm picking for this run so we want to basically just pick the best one uh, of the bunch and 
honestly this is kind of a difficult choice right because health of front row by 20 percent is insanely good however you'll notice that these are kind of ordered by uh, the same rarities as like troop types and and commanders and things like that meaning this purple one is kind of epic tier whereas these two are legendary tier so the game is essentially thinking like these are probably your better options so i'm going to pick between spear of the Lungin longinus and the anchor normally i would always go for damage reduction however this only applies to front row troops where this is going to reduce all enemy troops by uh 10 percent I just think that that's probably better because then I'm not limited to just front row for this buff. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and pick anchor right off the bat. And by them having 10% less troops, that means I'm going to be taking all damage. Uh, I'm going to be taking less damage uh, anyway, right? So it's it's kind of the same thing, um, but I think it just a, it, it is a more broad protection. So we're going to go ahead and pick that one. But let's say I did pick the front row, uh, the front row damage reduction, right? Moving forward, I would want to continue to stack those front row uh, buffs and the reason for that is because you can you instead of spreading all your buffs out between front row and back row uh, and then having some troops have more buffs than others what you can do is stack all them on front row or all them on back row I prefer front row because that's where you're going to be doing some tanking uh, but if you stock all of them on front row then you can kind of just put all your troops in front row and they'll have insane buffs whereas uh, if you did a little bit of both you're spreading yourself thin now i was able to just find this elite uh, armor which is really really good i've had an insanely good first floor honestly and you can see here this is also another relic so i get this relic for free this is called minor healing healing in this game mode is going to be crucial now there's a couple of ways that you can heal you can have a commander like richard or constantine of course in your army composition which will heal all the time relics are a great way to heal as well this is literally like i think the worst of the healing items but it's still good it heals five percent for all your troop strength there are also structures called healers hut i believe these heal 50 percent of your troop capacity which is insanely insanely good so you definitely want to capitalize on these in the later floors and you want to be healing your most tanky armies with them there are also blessings that will give you healing that will say like heal five percent at the start of battle or heal ten percent at the end of battle something like something like that um those are also very good as well so let's go ahead and keep clearing these uh these these tiles here and again this is floor one so these are you know relatively easy floors now i've uncleared most of the fog here i don't think that it's worth fighting these remaining armies now you could make the argument that if i fought this army right this is going to be one of the weakest armies i'll ever see in this entire run if i fight this army and i get a really good blessing off of him then it would be worth it however I don't know the drop rate of these blessings and so I can't recommend that strategy right that that may be a good strategy it may be the case that you should attack all the weak armies at the beginning of your run and try to stack as many blessings as you can moving forward for the harder uh, the harder floors where you're going to want to avoid every single enemy that you possibly can however again I cannot uh, I cannot guarantee that I'm going to get a blessing here. And so if I attack him and I don't get one, then it's literally just a waste of troops. And so until we can got to kind of get a better idea of what the drop rate is of these blessings, I can't recommend that strategy, even though I am, uh, I am inclined to try it out. It may be worthwhile to, to try to, uh, you know, risk the early game and get as many blessings early on as you can. Um, but that's up to you guys. If you want to do that now, I'm going to claim this free chest right here and then we we got another relic this is actually really crazy i'm getting a lot of relics right on the first floor um i have four right off the bat and i haven't spent anything so that's amazing um, i'm not even going to risk attacking these guys we're just going to move on to the next floor so we've progressed a little bit in this floor and we've run into two enemies and we can't progress progress any farther um without attacking one of them so there's two things to consider when you're deciding what enemy should you attack on the floor the first one is their relative strength so obviously this one is a little bit weaker than the one on the bottom uh he has 1.7 million whereas he he has 1.8 million so this one is going to be stronger which means it will be uh, more detrimental to the health of my troops the other thing you have to keep in mind though is that how many fog pieces are going to be uncleared if you attack a particular enemy if i attack him then we will clear these two pieces of fog to be revealed and these two will remain locked because he's standing nearby if i attack him well these two are going to stay locked because of this enemy and these two will be unlocked so at that point it's like at this in this scenario i'm unclear i'm unveiling two pieces of fog regardless so i might as well be attacking the guy with the lower power and i can progress arguably farther into the game board because he is one piece over to where the remainder of the fog is so we're gonna head we're gonna go ahead and attack him uh and hope that that will give us the most amount of benefit 
benefit now as you can see here i used my richard to tank a majority of the marches again and the reason that i'm doing this is because some of your relics are going to heal a percentage of your army and what you want to do is you know if you can whittle down the health of one particular army more than the others then you can you have a clear army that you can use those items on so for example if if i spread out damage evenly amongst all my armies up until this point and the result is that all of my armies ha lose about 10 percent of their health right and then i get an item that says restores 20 percent of your troop capacity well no matter who i use it on some of that item is going to be wasted and so what i would have to do is is postpone using that item for a longer period of time uh, and that way i can get the maximum effectiveness of it however if upon getting one of those items i already have an army that is degraded by 20 percent and the rest are degraded by let's say five percent well now i have a clear user of that relic and i can proceed with uh, the most amount of troops possible as soon as possible without waiting to use that relic so hopefully that makes sense to you guys um taking damage with one army is very uh is a very good strategy because then you can just target heal that army and keep the health of the rest of your armies relatively high let's proceed uh, further into the map i'm getting insanely lucky with relics this run i don't know what's going on i just found this primitive bolt for free this is another item that you want to save for the chief of each floor this will immediately reduce their troop strength by 20 percent i've seen others that do 30 or i think 45 percent as well so insanely good right insanely good item it's instantly damaging them by a ton before you even fight i literally just got another one i, I got a really good one too I, I don't know what's going on here this is crazy now we've already found the chieftain but i still have fog bo blocks that i can uncover and i might as well do so because these are free fog uh, fog blocks that i can clear that may have a relic or a chest or gold or something like that so before you do any fighting of course if you can keep clearing fog you should because you may just find for example uh knight armor increased all defense by cavalry units by 10 percent so had i fought him immediately i wouldn't have gone in there with this 10% cavalry buff and so what what's important for this game mode as you can tell is these stacking these micro optimizations right optimizing your blessings for a single row right the front row or the back row optimizing your blessings for you know health as opposed to attack because health is the best stat in the game um these micro uh, you know even taking taking fog fog blocks at a specific order these are all optimizations that will add up to make the rest of the run a lot better now i just uncovered a reinforcement camp these these are very important structures because they literally give you a free army now the important thing to know about these armies is that the commanders that you will get are equivalent to your version of that commander so for example i do not have edward i don't have him at all and the frame on edward looks like he's expertise same thing with tamaris uh, tamaris um, however, this will not be an expertise Edward. This will be a 1000 Edward because I don't even have him. So the game is going to give me what I would have if I unlocked him right now. So even though this looks like a really good choice because it's an expertise Edward, it's actually a terrible choice because he's not going to have any talents and he's not going to have any skills. This Saladin for me, I think is three zero 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 or two zero 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 so normally if this were an expertise saladin that would be pretty good although he does have lohar he's gonna be terrible right he's gonna be terrible uh however the minamoto tsao tsao this is going to be equivalent to the minamoto tsao tsao that i intentionally used in this fight and so even though minamoto isn't as good as saladin or edward uh he since i already have him expertise i know this is expertise because i have him and same thing with tsao tsao um this is actually going to be the best choice here and you can see based on the battle ranking here he has 1.7 mil where this is 1.6 mil and this is 1.5 mil the game is literally telling me like not only do i know he's the best option but it's telling me here so i'm gonna grab minamoto even though uh if had these been expertise they would have been better choices for me that is the best option and so it's important to know that and to realize that when you're progressing through this game mode all right we've uncovered fog to another enemy and now um it's pointless to fight him we're just gonna go ahead and hit the chieftain and again the previous chieftain that i fought was 3.3.0 million 3 million uh he's 3.4 so 
this is going to be the last chieftain that I attack without using one of these relics. Um, I really do want to save these for as long as possible. However, on floor three and, 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 and beyond, I'm probably going to use one of these relics on every single chief that I can. All right. So these are the blessings that I'm able to choose from here. So we see war gods protection at the start of battle gain a 10 second shield, which can absorb a large amount of damage damage factor 500 interesting you can scroll on these by the way i didn't know that at the beginning um this looks like it's not scrollable but you actually can scroll uh, this says increase the attack of front row troops by 30 percent or increase the health of front row troops by 30 percent now this is a tough choice uh lead of the charge and war gods protection are both good options however this shield is not going to stack with my alexander shield or my martel shield those are going to be more powerful shields regardless and they will likely pop within the first 10 seconds if not on maybe the 11th second i don't know it, it's hard to say i think i'm going to pick the health of front row troops by 30 percent because health again is the best stat in the game and it's the most important for sustaining your troops uh, and keeping them alive on the battlefield so we're gonna pick health of front row that may not be the best choice again i haven't had too many uh, too much time to experiment and immediately i clear a fog a fog piece and i can't proceed any farther oh i can go here so here we go so this is a a healing hut now um i don't have any army that i can heal by 50 percent however it's worth noting that you know if i leave this floor i'm gonna lose this option so i might as well use it right i might as well restore some health on an army and um looking here it's hard to tell exactly who has the least it's probably sun tzu if you're unsure you can go into your troops and click on them and it'll tell you how many units you have left so i have 192,000 on richard and i have a hundred and eighty eight thousand on my sun tzu um, richard also not only does he does he have more troops but he also heals himself whereas sun tzu uh does have a little bit of healing from my joan of arc but it's not that much and so i think in this uh in this event it's probably better to use this healing hut on my sun tzu because he again he gets less healing but also so, uh, we want to keep Joan of Arc alive. She's very good for providing buffs. So we're going to heal him back up to full. So as you can see here, I used a relic that revealed the enemy elites on this floor. So essentially what's happening now is that I can, I know that this is an enemy elite, so I'm not going to ever click this tile because it will immediately lock all the tiles around it. All right. So I ran into a sunset creeper. I can't go any farther in that direction. And this gives me some gold. Now what I could do if I have, if I hadn't used that item, I would have clicked to this spot, right? I would have clicked him and then I would have had to choose between where to go. However, um, since I used that item, I can actually fight the weaker one, which I would have done regardless. However, that keeps these pieces, uh, these pieces are unblocked. So from when I beat him, I can proceed up this way, uh, if I want to, and then that's a better choice. So using the items that reveal enemy elites are very good. Uh, ideally you would want to use them later on in the, in the game as well. However, um, I was getting kind of full on my relic slot. So I felt I had to use one anyway. So I used it on this one and, and I think it's going to be of good use. Now we've uncovered the disc of destiny. What I'm going to do is spin this wheel and essentially this is just like the um the wheel of fortune basically um except you can get a choice of some of these different things and so um hopefully it lands on one of these more uh, legendary looking ones um ring of shield would be really great i really would like a free uh a free blessing because those are just great uh the gold you can use to buy relics i don't think you can buy blessings with gold i don't remember seeing any uh so the gold would be the worst thing i get here but regardless let's go ahead and spin it and we'll see what we get and we get 500 gold so i mean hey if we're gonna get gold i'll take the maximum amount that's really good i don't know the percentage like what is the drop rate of those like is it an even chance for all of them i doubt it the wheel of fortune is not an even chance for all of them so i don't know what the chances are there of getting a legendary um but hopefully they're decent i would I, I would like to see them be even right i can understand wheel of fortune not being even even though i wish it were um but for this i i hope they would be i don't know they're probably not okay so we found the chieftain and we also found a healer's hut now i could use the healer's hut now so that way i go into the chieftain fight with more troops however it, it i might as well take the damage from him first so let's go ahead and do that so when i pick one of these blessings um i don't know if sphere flame is that good it does give you a disarm for three seconds but it's only once in the battle and i don't know if three seconds of disarm is as good as some of the other choices i have here influential leader doesn't seem like it's that good because you can't choose your you can't change your armies after the fact however um it does what it does essentially is it gives you a higher cap for healing right that's really what what you're doing with influential leader this sincere love over here essentially gives you three percent uh, uh troop health every single time that i win a battle so right it, right off the bat it won't help me at all after i defeat my first enemy it will be three percent and then it'll stack up to six times so maximum i could get would be 18 percent health for all troops with this however i won't see that maximum benefit 
for probably two floors from now maybe one thing that i think would be interesting to know is does this affect the armies that i have yet to recruit so in the future in future floors i'll be able to recruit different armies if i do will they have this buff applied i don't know i would hope so but I, i'm not sure it's worth noting that the sooner that you pick re a sincere love in the earlier game the more benefit you're going to get right because let's say you find this on floor of 15 or something like that you're only going to get the benefit of it for 17 uh 18 19 right because 16 is a checkpoint so that's only three floors and that's that might be enough for you to maximize the the value of this however your troops are going to be severely defl uh, deflated um or, or lose a lot of a lot of power by that point point. and so this in the early game is a very good choice however in the late game this is actually is not a good choice at all man i'm really struggling to decide which of these two is the better option my gut is telling me that influential leader is the better choice i'm gonna go with influential leader uh i i don't think that this is an obvious choice some of you may may disagree but i don't think this is an obvious choice here because having 18 percent extra health early on in this will not only um it's essentially what it's going to do is you will keep more troops alive you'll have way more tankiness and so that is similar to healing in a way whereas influential leader doesn't do anything unless you heal and so if you get unlucky with healing items this is actually a bad choice but I'm going to pick influential leader because I want to see um, how much I can exploit that extra troop capacity. Now of all of these troops, uh, Sun Tzu again has the least amount. So what I could do is I can heal him with this healer's hut. However, I'm thinking if I heal my Richard and I just keep Sun Tzu in the back row for a lot longer, I think I'm going to get more value out of the restored health on Richard than I would for Sun Tzu. Now, another thing to consider here is that, uh, this, how this is going to bring my troops up to full, right? Because it heals 50%. None of them are below 50%. So it's going to bring them up to full. Um, the maximum troop capacity of these two armies, Ethelfled and Martel is actually higher. So this is 148,000, whereas this is 141,000. So by picking one of these two to heal, I actually just get 7,000 more troops for free. At the end of the day though, given how much lower Sun Tzu is, I would get the most amount of troops, even though these have a, a, an expansion with the with the skill here um even even considering that Sun Tzu is still uh relatively lower um regardless so I would actually get the most amount of troops by healing Sun Tzu so I'm still gonna go ahead and do that I don't know if that's the best choice but statistically he will get the most amount of troops from this and I think that's a good choice now floor four obviously this is a checkpoint floor I would get a chest here normally but I've already passed this floor so I already got this chest on my previous run which means if you do a reset the chests don't come back so there's no reason to replay this event more than once other than it just being a fun event this is the secret market and man every single thing on here looks like a legendary item so this is going to be difficult I don't have a lot of gold so it's going to be hard to choose personally I think the best choice is here are major healing and arrow of truth uh, but I don't have enough gold to buy both of them so what you want to consider here is arrow of truth will immediately destroy a guardian so this includes guardian elites just not the chiefs and later down the line there's probably going to be an instance where you have to defeat a guardian uh, elite so what you have to consider is will that guardian elite deal more than 10 percent damage to all of your troops when we're comparing these two relics right because that's what major healing does it will restore your troops by 10 percent of their strength i'm pretty sure that this is of maximum troop capacity some of the other relics and blessings are relative to the level of troops that you have at the time that they're used however as a healing item i believe that this is going off of maximum capacity so essentially what this would do is restore 21,000 troops to all of my armies except for the ones with the expansions um or expansion skills but uh, that's only slightly more so when i think about it um will a future guardian elite deal uh, reduce all of my armies by more than 21,000 troops each I think probably yes I think they probably will so I think in this instance arrow of truth is going to be a better choice so I'm going to pick that hopefully you guys can understand the logic behind that right because at first glance healing is probably the better choice but I I just think that later on the line there's going to be an instance where killing a guardian an elite will save me more than 10 percent of troops I hope that makes sense I think a deadly bolt here is a great option so I'm going to use grab that one now I have max relics right I have a maximum amount of them and so if I want to go ahead and purchase priest's blessing which does revive one of my fallen troops 
I think that this isn't that good and it's, it's reflected by the fact that it's very cheap but I might as well buy it because I have the gold for it and reviving a troop army is, is a decent choice so what we're gonna do is we're going to use a relic right off the bat to free up a free slot and uh, I think minor healing is something that is gonna be the most useful because a lot of my troops were low besides Sun Tzu obviously so let's go ahead and do that um, and now we can go ahead and buy this uh, priest's blessing it may not be very good but I'm, I'm still want to see what it does in the late, uh, later rounds okay so I had a relic that would teleport a specific guardian uh, away from a specific spot and it happened to be that when I teleported him over here he teleported to a block that already cleared which allowed me to proceed farther into the map and discover the guardian chief without even fighting anybody now you might be thinking why didn't you grab this chest well when I do it gives me a relic and so I had to use a relic regardless uh, in order to grab this chest but by doing the one that teleports an enemy uh, it actually let me get all the way to the Guardian Chief without even fighting anybody which is crazy now I did uncover the uh, altar of Karak which lets me revive a dead unit but um, I don't have any dead units so unfortunately that's gonna be wasted and now it's time to start using my relic so I'm gonna be using the uh, weakest bolt that I can because this is going to be relative to the future Chiefs that I fight this is going to be the weakest one so let's go ahead and use that bring them right cut them right down to size now this is another choice where i can pick a blessing it says um, battlefield oath is obviously the best choice here it says each skill use has a 30 percent chance to take effect for one extra time so really you can have your skills proc for free like that's incredibly good incredibly good a third of the time i'm going to get an extra heal from from richard a third of the time i'm going to get an extra shield from my martel like that's crazy good so we're definitely gonna pick this um, especially because the others the other two aren't really great options uh, in other scenarios they might be but I don't think they are here now this is floor 19 and I've already revealed the chief here by using an item so I knew to come right towards him I wanted to document at least the ending of this run so I did only lose a couple of troops here um, I do still have some reserves that I'm going to replace some of my wounded uh, armies with um, and I do have a couple of relics here that I can use on this final uh, on this final uh, chief here so I think that this run was actually really really good um, I was able to again like he's gonna deal such little damage to me and he has half health and I still only lost a couple of armies here and there and I have plenty that I can replace them with in my troop uh, reserve so um, I wanted to just quickly document the ending of this uh, Golden Kingdom run because I'm definitely going to beat this chief and uh, I used all the tips that I mentioned earlier on in this video So there it is floor 20 we absolutely destroyed the last level and we still had plenty of troops left over in our marches you could see Richard did really really well um, and we still had our Martel from the very beginning so that does show that uh, Julius Caesar was a good choice there I'm glad I could get to level 20 in this video so that way I could show you that the tips are actually good if you made it all the way to the end of the video of course hopefully you will drop a thumbs up on the video that helps out the video a ton comment down below any questions that you have about golden kingdom as well as suggestions that i could do uh to improve my gameplay i'm sure some of you who are experts on this type of gameplay may have seen some mistakes that i made and by dropping them down below it will help me become a better player and it will help everybody else down in the comments subscribe to the channel if you're new around here i know a lot of you guys aren't subscribed so make sure you click the sub button click the bell button to be notified the next time that i upload a rise of kingdoms video as always my social media links are in the description below so make sure you drop a follow over on instagram my discord's down there as well if you want to be notified when i go live my twitch is also down there so you can follow me on there when i when i do live stream rise of kingdoms and finally there is a link in the description below to download rise of kingdoms for free for your pc and your mac it's a program called blue stacks it's what i'm currently using right now which is why you can see my cursor on the screen and this is my favorite way to play rise of kingdoms it gives me the least amount of crashes and i feel like there's a little bit less lag so give it a shot it's free link is in the description with that being said guys thank you so much for watching this has been omniarch i will talk to you guys again soon peace